Hello, everyone, and welcome to a very special edition of Charlotte Today on Facebook Live. I'm Mia Atkins, and this is Eugene Robinson here. How are you doing today, Eugene? I am doing wonderful. It's so good to be on Facebook Live with you. I'm excited about today. Absolutely. And all week long, everybody's been getting to know me, and you've really been interviewing me and letting everyone get a taste of who I am. But I think it's my turn to learn a little bit more about you. What do you say? Okay, let's do it. All right. Well, I know you played pro football for a really long time, but I want to know, you know, how did that all get started for you? When did your football career really kick off? You know, it kind of really kicked off in college because I was one of those kids that kind of grew late. I was small in college, weighed 145 pounds my my uh, freshman year. I didn't get to be about like, maybe 175 my senior year. So I was very, very small. But my athleticism was really, really good. And the academics of football, all those things, I started to realize that, man, I'm actually making some really good plays and making good tackles and things of that nature. So right in college, I started to learn that, man, you know, you might have a shot playing pro ball. And who knew that the Seattle Seahawks would call me up and whatnot, and I would give me a free, a free agent tryout. And back in 1985, I ended up making their team. And that was one of the best things that ever happened to me. Okay, well, let's talk about that journey once you went pro, because it all started for you in college, but then it really became real for you. So talk about the beginning days of when you started on the Seahawks. Okay, here it is. It, when you get into training camp, this is a big thing about training camp and, and football. Nobody talks to you. When you're a rookie, no one says a word to you at all. I mean, it's like, <laughs> you're, it's like you're a ghost or something. It's like no one says anything because they don't foster relationships and they don't want to foster relationships because they realize that you may not be there. So no one talked to me my like entire for six weeks, four or five of those weeks, none of the veterans said a word to me. And so that was my experience. So I was like, Hey, maybe they don't like me or something like that. Um, I had to kind of break the club and make the team first to be accepted. And once I made the team, you get this relegated role of just special team servant. And I was that guy, special teams, servant guy, get my towels, get the food. Here's another thing. They made me go every Wednesday and Thursday to pick up food for the veterans because food was not <laughs> offered. At the, so I had to drive to McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's. You were like an intern. <laughs> I was an intern. And so they made me drive there. And guess what? I had to pay for it with my own money. No, no. <laughs> yes. I mean, the dude didn't give a brother a break at all. I'm like, dude, man, I don't even make that much money, but there you go. So I was doing that, but that was my initiation in, into the fraternity of, of football, particularly in the defensive backs, as I'm a defensive back. You had to kind of earn your way and earn the privilege for those guys to talk to you. Okay. Well, I want to learn more about your progression through your career, but we do have a question from a viewer right now, Eugene. What was your major in college? My major in college was computer science, and computer science has helped me tremendously in football. Just the academics of knowing numbers, being around numbers, and being accustomed to using formulas. I can remember plays and sequence of events, a sequence of plays, very, very easily because of my academic background in computer science. Okay, well, let's keep things going through your progression of your career, because we talked about the beginnings and you were basically an intern for this team, <laughs> but you played professional football for a very long time and had some huge accomplishments. So let's keep going down the road and talk more about what happened after you got out of that beginning phase. So out of, out of the beginning stage, I really started to hit my stride. And, and I think the Lord had really blessed me tremendously because I was a guy, I, ha I was fortunate to have this guy named Dave Brown, who was my mentor, who had passed away. And another guy named Ken Easley, another mentor mice, two players whom uh, I was underneath and I played alongside with, and they really kind of taught me the ropes. And I remember my skill level getting better and better because of some of the academic things they put in place, uh, going to Dave Brown's house on Wednesday and Thursday to watch film, and some of the athletic things they put in place uh, on the field at the work practice. I did all those things, and I'm telling you, me, I got good. I got really good. And then <laughs> man, when you hit somebody like the great thing about getting an interception is it's exhilarating fumble. But when you hit somebody and, and you're not supposed to knock them down or knock them down hard, when that happens, it's a light bulb that goes on in your head. And the light bulb was turned on for me. I'm like, hold up. 
You mean to tell me I could do this all the time? Interceptions, fumbles, and that of that nature? And then my career just went from being just a guy to being like right. the main guy on the team and for people mm-hmm. to look for, looking for me to make plays. That's always that moment when you find your true passion in life, when you do something and you realize, wait, I get to do this all the time. It's the best feeling. And that's how you know that you're doing it right. So let's keep going down the road here because I know you have a Super Bowl win under your belt. So let's talk a little bit more about that. Yes, being traded was like, you would think that it's a really bad thing, but it was probably one of the best things that happened to me. Um, but my last year in Seattle, 1995 in, in Seattle, uh, a new coach that came in and then they were thinking about trading me because a new coach, I wasn't their guy. Well, I get traded to the Green Bay Packers and my best, one of my best friends became my best friend, Reggie White. He's another guy who, incredible football player. He had passed away also, but incredible football player. He called me up and said, hey, man, uh, Green Bay, we want to trade for you. But the next thing I know, I ended up going to Green Bay. One of the best things that ever happened to me because I got paired with not only Brett Favre on offense, Edgar Bennett. We had some really good guys offensively. Mark Chamorro, some really good guys, Keith Jackson. But on defense, our defense was one of the best defenses. And it seemed that I was like that missing cog. I was that guy that when I came in, they were like needed a guy like me to tell the other defensive backs, where to go and what to do, and don't worry about it because I got this thing handled. And that's what I did when I got to Green Bay. We ended up going to a Super Bowl, and we ended up beating the New England Patriots something like 31 to 24 or 21, something like that. But it was one of the highlights of my career winning a Super Bowl in Green Bay. Right. And it's just so inspiring to hear that, you know, you finally found that place and came in and we're like, all right, I am the leader for you guys. I am going to tell you what to do and make this happen for us. So we actually have another question from a viewer right now that I want to hear the answer to for sure. How often do you wear your Super Bowl ring? I only really wear my Super Bowl rings if I'm going to speak at an event that's with children in school. I'll bring my Super Bowl rings and I'll let the kids handle them, take pictures with them. So typically it's going to an event in school that I'll bring the Super Bowl rings so they let them know. And I use that as kind of academics, athletics, how it meets success. Okay. So another question, a little bit different here. You know, I did just move here to Charlotte. So let's talk about what your favorite restaurant in Charlotte is that I have to try moving here. Okay. I got a couple of favorite restaurants. It's got this little pizza place I like to go to. It's called My Pieces of My Pizza Chain. So I like that. Then there is a restaurant that's down in the Arboretum. It's called the Acropolis. Okay. A little Greek restaurant the Acropolis. And I'm just telling you right there, that little restaurant, I go there all the time, have my uh, lunch dates or some things of that nature when I have business meetings. I always go to that place to go ahead and have their, their Greek chicken salad. I absolutely love it. And everybody I bring, Ooh. I bring them down there just to eat that. The Acropolis and the Arboretum is my spot. Eugene, you know, you and I have talked about how much I love to eat this week. So you're making me so hungry right now. And on that topic, you know, you and I have been working together for a little bit now. So obviously after football, you transitioned into TV. So how did you know it was time to kind of retire from football and transition into a new path in your life? It's because when you don't want to retire, they kick you out. <laughs> they tell you you got a job. That's what you're they like, tell you. I didn't choose to quit. They kicked me out. <laughs> yeah, they said they gave me the big boot. Get out of here, Robinson. Yeah, get out of here. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, but um, it was it was time. It was sixteen years. It was time. And how I got into te- television and radio is because I was always one of the most interviewed persons on the team. Absolutely, one of the most interviewed persons. And so, because of that, it allowed me to develop skills of how to go ahead and speak and camp and the camera to interview, um, to be interviewed, what that felt like. And so that became my training ground. And then when I took a look at internship while I was playing football with the um, Carolina Panthers, also with the Green Bay Packers, also with the Seattle Seahawks, I was doing television and, and radio. And because of that, it was a natural transition to not use my degree as computer science, which I did. I, I worked two years as a computer science um writing software when I first started playing football. And then I didn't want to do that anymore. 
I went into like, television. Not for me. I know. I went. I saw. I went into television and <laughs> and and communication, if you will, because of my experience playing professional football. And I think uh, a career in television might be just a little bit more exciting than a career in computer science, for sure. At least for me, I could never ever do that. And you know, I really commend you for finding finding that path after football. I know my fiance right now is about to retire from his sport, and he's trying to find his path post you know, athlete life. And so it's really great that you were able to find that and find what you love to do. So what do you miss most about football now, though? Because I know you love your career in TV and you love working with me, I'm sure. But there's got to be some things that you miss about it. Okay, this will be funny. The biggest thing that most players miss about football is two things. And I'm not sure if they're in this order is getting paid those big old checks that you got you should get paid from, okay? And the second thing that you miss is you don't miss the hits, you don't miss the football, the interceptions, you miss the people, the relationship. It's like being in a fraternity all over again and mm -hmm. or sorority, if you will. It's like being in that fraternal group that you don't get unless you're playing another sport, basketball, football, baseball, professional level, where that – coming together happens once again. It happens in college, then it happens in football, and that's what you miss. The relationships, Reggie White, Leroy Butler, Brett Favre, I can name a whole bunch of cats. Funniest dudes on earth. These dudes are absolutely funny. I miss those funny moments in the National Football League. Okay, well, we've got another viewer question here from Blair. Do any of your children play, play football, or did any of them ever play football? So my son, Brandon, played I mean, he played football. He played in high school and then in college at Liberty. And then he had a sh uh, tryout with the, the Saints. And he didn't end up making it. But he was a very, very good football player. And maybe as for a dad, that was probably one of the most rewarding things. Both my children, my daughter, she was in – she ran track and she did some crew uh, and, at Clemson. But having your kids do sports that you absolutely love, I could go ahead and just – jump full board into that and, and be a part of that and kind of live vicariously through them and experience what they were experiencing at that time. And those are wonderful memories. So yes, my son played ball and I love okay. every moment of it. So I guess I'm wondering, you know, we talked about the things that you missed about football, but I bet you still carry a little bit of that with you today. So how do you kind of keep that alive in you and keep that spirit of loving football with you as you transitioned out of it? So for most of all, most people don't know that besides doing professional, um, uh, when I left professional football and besides doing what we do here at WCNC and what we mm -hmm. did, I've done with the Carolina Panthers being involved in that, I'm a high school coach. I coach football, wrestling, and track. All right. And football, it keeps me, being around young kids keeps you just young and keeps you in it. And it's, a, it's like an investment. It's like a ministry, if you will. I absolutely love being a coach. And so, I'm never away too far away from football because I'm a high school coach. I'm never too far away from track and field because I'm a high school coach. And I'm never too far away from wrestling because I'm a high school coach because of coaching. And because of that, it keeps me glued to and invested in sports. Right. And I, I think that's so great that you're able to do that and you get to, you know, hang out with some of the younger athletes, the younger generation. So I'm sure you tell a lot of them some of these things, but what would you tell the younger athletes that are looking to get into a sport and go pro? So the biggest thing I tell them is football is an academic game. It's not so much the, the brute force that you see. It's an academic game. If you can go ahead and know the the academics of football, the X's and O's, as we say, the office of sets that we have, whether we're talking about a West Coast offense, uh, what we call a power offense, or what all the different defenses, 4-3, four, 3-4, three, three, four, um, monster defenses, uh, flex defense, all these different things, it's academics. And if you can get the academics, now you just enhance your ability to play football. Now you became not a good football player, maybe a better football player, but maybe even a great, because now you're maximizing the academics with athleticism, and that is powerful. And then when you put that with the preparation and the readiness that you got to have as a football player, mm -hmm. to be prepared, to know what you got to do, the X and O's, and then to be ready and not be afraid of the butterflies, because the butterflies only remind you that it's time to put work in. And when you get that and know that, 
you are on your way. You are definitely on your way. And when you do have a setback, it's okay. That's part of the deal. That's just part of the deal. Everybody has setbacks. Just mm -hmm. part of the deal. Get up and keep walking. I absolutely love that, Eugene. Well, we have another viewer question here that I am very interested to hear the answer to. So if you could relive one day in your career, what would that be? In my career, it would be the day I got married. I'll marry my wife over again. Oh. Oh my gosh, my heart is melting. Tell me a little bit more about her. Yeah, I would marry Gia over again, absolutely. Um, I met her back in college, and when I met Gia in college, uh, then we forged out this entire life together and it started with football, but she knew me when I was playing football in college, and she knew nothing about football, and she became really kind of my, I don't know, rock. I mean, the girl was just, yeah, it's just rock, and because of that, um, even through our ups and downs and even through all that stuff, I'm like, nah, nah, this, she's, she's a person for me. That's, that's my girl right there. And so from that standpoint, it, when I look at my career and how spread out it was, if it's not the moments I miss of catching interception or fumbles or even winning the Super Bowl, uh, probably the best thing that ever happened to me was meeting Gia Mashad at the time became Gia Robinson and getting married mm -hmm. back in 1985, October 1st. And probably getting to know her, the very first time I met her was on Halloween in 1982. Wow. Eugene, you guys remind me so much of my fiance and I. I met Sam in the midst of his gymnastics career, and our whole lives have been just completely revolved around his sport. And, you know, we're about to transition out of that. So what is some advice that you would give in that in that period of going from, you know, your whole lives revolving around the sport to just living without that aspect in there? You know, for, for Sam, he's going to realize that there's going to be a missing period and a grieving period because you've done gymnastics your entire life and it's been such a part of you. The biggest thing I can say is that transition and transitioning into something together with someone that's you or guys, a couple that helps mm -hmm. things and that helps mitigate so many things because now you have a different focus and then you can take your focus to how you were so myopic, uh, myopic and, um, and, 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 and gymnastics, you can put that towards mm -hmm. what you're transitioning into. And that's the biggest thing I would say, having something to transition to and transition with someone who can hear the ups and downs, hear you bent, hear some of the cries, hear the tears, all that stuff and the frustration as you kind of blossom together, that is worth wow. So the period that you guys are in is going to be a really good period after the Olympics. And as you yep. do it together, it's going to be wonderful. And it will even solidify more your relationship. Absolutely. And we'll be transitioning into our life here in Charlotte with all of you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in to this special edition of Charlotte Today on Facebook Live, and we will see you next time.